فصل في الحث على طلب العلم والعمل والتعليم واطلب علوم الدين وارجع إلى اليقين فالعلم قوت القلب Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad al-fatihi lima ulik wal khatimi lima sabak nasiril haq bil haq wal hadhi ila siratikal mustaqim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi haqa qadrihi wa miqdarihi al-azim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and welcome to another edition of Faslon Reminders. Alhamdulillah, first and foremost we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that he has given us and from amongst the biggest blessings is that he Jalla Jalalu enable us to experience the sacred months of Zul Qaeda and Zul Hijjah. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to reap the bountiful rewards presented especially during Zul Hijjah, the month where pilgrims perform their Hajj rituals and which also happens to be the last month in the Islamic calendar. As we look back at all the 12 months that have passed us, this is an opportunity for us to stop reflect and ponder on our on the state of our affairs how have we grown in our dealings with our creator jalla jalalu how would our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam think of us in our current states how have we been in our interactions with the creations of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we cross into the new islamic year into the month of muharram it presents another another new opportunity for us to renew our faith and strengthen our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the blessed month of Muharram, which we will enter into, is amongst the sacred months in the year. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in a hadith in, in Sahih al-Bukhari, Inna zamana qadistadara kahayatihi yawma khalaq Allahu samawati wal ar. Hassanah ithna ashara shahran minha arba'atun hurum. Thalathun mutawaliyat, zul qa'dah wa zul hijjah, Wal Muharram, Warajabu Mudar Alladhi Bayna Jamada wa Sha'ban. And this hadith means, time has come back to its original state, which it had when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala created the heavens and the earth. The year is twelve months, four of which are sacred. Three of them are in succession: Zul Qaeda, Zul Hijjah, and Al Muharram. And the fourth being Rajab Mudar, which is named after the tribe of Mudar as they used to respect this month, which stands between Jamad al-Thani and Sha'ban. Now, Muharram, in addition to being a sacred month, it is also the first month of a new year. And this is especially significant because, naturally, everyone will want to start the new year on, on a right footing. And this is a practice that is highly encouraged in Islam because our teachers always emphasize the importance of being consistent in our actions and, in, and if we have a good start with the right intentions and preparations, inshallah, it will carry us through the entire year until we meet the end of Zul Hijjah again. To better appreciate the Islamic calendar, let me share a little bit on when it was first implemented. The implementation of the Hijri Islamic calendar in terms of its date, month, and year in numerals was carried out by Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab during his caliphate. Previously, the Muslims referred to a particular year by a significant event that occurred during that year. There were no numerals assigned yet to a year. Then one day, the Khalifa Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab sent a letter to one of his governors in Basra to the companion Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and the month Sha'ban was mentioned in the letter. Now, Sayyidina Abu Musa al-Ash'ari had some doubts to the reference for the month of Sha'ban. He didn't know whether it was referring to the month of Sha'ban of that year or the previous year. Or as some narrations say, the following year. So he wrote a letter back to Khalifa Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab seeking clarification. And that was the moment Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab realized the importance for the need of a standardized uh, structure for the Islamic calendar. 
Now, after consulting his companions, the the Muslims uh, decide agreed to start the Islamic calendar from the year of the migration of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is the Hijrah, which is the Hijrah, because everyone was in conformity to its occurrence. And they also started the month with the month of Muharram. Now, back to the month of Muharram, it is not just the first month in the Islamic calendar, but it is, but it is also one of the sacred months, as mentioned. And the month of Muharram has its specific merits, as with other special months like Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, or Zulhijjah. It is said by the scholars that the best month to fast after Ramadan is Muharram, based on the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, as mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Afdal al-Siyam ba'da Ramadan shahrullah al-Muharram wa afdal al-Salah ba'da al-Faridah Salatul Layl. And the meaning of this hadith is the most excellent fast after Ramadan is Allah's month, which is which is Al-Muharram. And the most excellent prayer after the obligatory prayer is prayer during the night. Uh, and, and, and the best months to fast after Ramadan and after Muharram is Rajab, Zulhijjah, Zulqaidah, and then Sha'ban. Now, there are specific spe uh, supplications for the month of Muharram, which have been transmitted from our pious predecessors. And not forgetting the outpourings of blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this blessed month. And last but not least, there is one very special day in this month, which is the day of Ashura, which falls on the 10th of Muharram. Now, with Muharram being the first month in the Islamic calendar, it is a common practice for Muslims around the world to read a specific supplication on the last day of the last month in the Islamic calendar, which is Zulhijjah, before the time of Maghrib on that day. Because a new day in the Islamic calendar starts after the time of Maghrib. And this application is known as the prayer for the end of the year. And the best time to read it is after the Asar prayers on the last day of uh, Zulhijjah before the time of Maghrib. But uh, even if we can't because our, of our busy schedule, we can always read it after the time of Maghrib. What's important is we try not to miss reading it completely. Now, the team from Muslim.sg has done a good job in writing out the du'a, which is the prayer for the end of the year on their website, uh, in one of the articles uh, on the blessed month of Muharram. And they've also included the transliteration and meaning of the du'a, which I will read to you, inshallah. And so the du'a for the end of the year goes, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, اللهم ما عملنا في هذه السنة مما نهيتنا عنه فلم فلم نتب منه ولم ترضاه ولم تنساه وهلمت علينا بعد قدرتك على أقوبتنا ودعوتنا إلى التوبة منه بعد جراءتنا على مأسيتك فإننا نستغفرك فاغفر لنا وما عملنا فيها مما ترضاه ووعدتنا عليه الثواب فنسألك اللهم يا كريم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تتقبله منا ولا تقطع رجاءنا منك يا كريم وارزقنا أجر الصابرين مما أصابنا من هوم وبلايا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين and the meaning of the of, of this prayer in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, all praises and thanks be to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. Prayers and salutations upon our Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, his family and all of his companions. O Allah, there have been wrongful deeds that we have acted upon this year, of which we have yet to repent from, and which you do not consent, nor forget them. Yet you remain merciful despite your power to punish us, and even give us the opportunity to repent after having committed these sins in insolence. For that, we seek forgiveness from you, so please grant us your forgiveness. And for what we have done, of which you consent of, and which you have promised to reward us for, we ask from you, O Allah, the most gracious, the most glorious, and most honorable, to accept our actions, and do not dash our hopes, O most gracious. O Allah, grant us your rewards for our patience in all the tests that we have been through. O our Lord, grant us goodness in this world, and goodness in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Prayers and salutations upon our Prophet Muhammad 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and all of his companions. Praise be to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. And it is encouraged to read this prayer three times. Now moving on. Uh, so after Maghrib, now after we have read the prayer for the end of the year, we are encouraged to read the prayer for the start of the year after Maghrib has entered. Again, I am taking reference from the good work done by the team from Muslim.sg. And similar to the prayer for the end of the year, they have also included the transliteration and meaning of the dua for the prayer for the start of the year. And uh, the prayer for the start of the year is Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Wassalatu wassalam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma anta al-abadiyul qadimul awal wa ala fadlikal azim wa judikal mu'awal wa hadha amun jadid qad akbala alayna Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil amni wal iman wa salamati wal islam Rabbi wa rabbuka Allah hilalu rujdin wa khairin نسألك الإسماء فيه من الشيطان الرجيم وأوليائه وجنوده والأونة على هذه النفس الأمارة بسوء والاشترال بما يقربنا إليك زلفا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم إنا نسألك العافية عافية والشفاء من كل داء ووباء وجعلنا من المعافين والسالمين منها وعيد علينا لذة التحنث والاعتكاف في بيت من بيوتك يا أكرم الأكرمين Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. And the meaning of this uh, prayer for the start of the year, In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, all praises and thanks be to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. Prayers and salutations upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and all of his companions. O Allah, you are the everlasting, the eternal and the first. And it's with your great blessings and generosity that this new year has dawned upon us. O oh Allah, let this moon appear on us with security and faith, with safety and Islam. My Lord and your Lord is Allah. May this moon bring guidance and goodness. We seek from you, Ya Allah, protection from the devil, his allies and forces. And we seek from you assistance to repel against our own urges to sin and to immerse us with which that brings us closer to you. O oh Allah, we ask from you for well-being and cure from all sickness and protect us from any harm. Restore to us the sweetness of performing acts of worship and etikaf at your house. O Allah, the most honorable. Prayers and salutations upon our Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and upon his family and all of his companions and praises and thanks be to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. So you, 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 can, you can read this dua at the start of the year uh, when the time of Maghrib has entered. And just to point out, that there are different versions of such prayer, the du'a for the end of the year and the du'a for the start of the year. And we can choose the ones we want to read. Or you can even read your own du'a in English or Malay if Arabic is too difficult for you. Uh, what is important is we read it. But of course, just to point out here, the supplications that are narrated from our pious predecessors are still the best ones to read and follow. Because they are the ones who are closer to Allah SWT than us. And, and the, main, uh, the, the main idea here is to have an awareness amongst ourselves, especially within our family members, that this is one of those events that we set aside time specifically to plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He accepts our deeds in the past year and that He blesses us, our family members, and, uh, and all Muslims around the world with the arrival of the new year. Now, as we start the first day of Muharram, we are encouraged to increase our acts of worship. And one of the acts narrated by one of the great imams, Syed Ahmad bin Zaini Dahlan al-Hassani, is to read Ayatul Kursi 360 times on the first day of Muharram, starting each, each recitation of Ayatul Kursi with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And uh, we read this with the intention that it acts as a form of protection for us and our family members from the accursed shaitan throughout the year. And as we progress through Muharram, we should try to fast at least three days during this month and also to reap the rewards based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned earlier whereby he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the best time to fast after Ramadan is in the month of Muharram. And if possible, we should try to fast on the 9th, 10th and 11th Muharram with the 10th of Muharram coinciding with the, with the special day of Ashura. Uh, in addition, we should try to give more charity during this month because rewards are multiplied during the sacred months 
and we must try to fight our nafs to refrain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prohibitions because falling into sin will exponentiate the sin incurred. And last but not least, we should try at the very least to venerate this month in general and have an awareness and understanding that it is the first month and one of the sacred months in the Islamic calendar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his holy Quran in the meaning of this ayah is that it is so. And whoever aggrandizes the symbols, uh, meaning the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed it is from the piety of hearts. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us taqwa in our hearts and forgives us of all our sins and accept all our good deeds which we, which we performed in the past year and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his blessings upon us in the blessed month of Muharram and throughout the coming year and may he jalla jalalu rectify the states of all muslims around the world and grants us and grants us the opportunity to attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam every single day in this new year and with that, I wish you a blessed uh, new year. Uh, and inshallah, we will see each other again. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.